I'm going to show you step by step how you can safely lower your blood sugar naturally over the next four weeks. I've been a medical doctor for almost 30 years and in that time I found that most often when people are told they have high blood sugar, nobody takes the time to explain to them what's going wrong, much less what they can do apart from just taking pills. So I'm going to make everything really simple and easy to understand. This will help you when you're going through the step-by-step -step process I'm going to take you through to lower your blood sugar. Before we start, I have a free two-page document that shows you the best foods to eat and the ones to avoid to lower your blood sugar. And you can get that from the link in the description. So what does it even mean when your doctor tells you that you have high blood sugar. First of all, there are lots of different types of sugar. The regular sugar, that sucrose, which you put in your tea or your coffee, is made up of one block of glucose, which is one type of sugar, and one block of fructose, which is another type of sugar. The fructose and the glucose are held together by a kind of invisible glue. When you drink that tea or coffee, it goes into your stomach where that sugar will be pulled apart so that the glucose and the fructose are now separate. Both of these will go into your blood, but what we measure as blood sugar is just the glucose. So the glucose will go into your blood and raise your blood glucose, which is what we call your blood sugar. Why am I hammering on glucose so much? I'll come back to that later. So let's continue with our journey. When your blood glucose, that's your blood sugar, rises above a certain level, your pancreas releases a hormone called insulin. Your body uses hormones to send messages around your body. So this insulin travels to every part of your body through your blood. And it goes around knocking on doors, telling each of your cells, Look, there's too much glucose in the blood. This is dangerous. I need you to open up and take some so that the amount in the blood can come down. If you're healthy and everything's working normally the way it should, when insulin knocks, your cells listen and they open up and they take some of that sugar, that glucose, out of your blood and into the cells and your blood sugar comes down. So as we keep on overeating and eating the wrong types of food over time, these cells become stuffed and uncomfortable. You know the feeling when you've had so much to eat that just looking at food makes you feel nauseated, right? Just like that. So now when you eat, your blood glucose goes up, insulin comes along and knocks on the door, telling your cells to open up, and remove some of the sugar from the blood and they're like, no thank you, we're stuffed, we can't take any more. And they refuse to open their doors and the sugar in your blood stays high. So this is where we talk about insulin resistance. If insulin knocks on the door and talks to your cells and they listen and they open up, that means that your cells are responding to insulin. They are sensitive to insulin. But if insulin knocks and the cells don't listen and they don't open up, that means that they've become stubborn. They've become resistant to insulin. So when your pancreas sees that your blood glucose, your blood sugar is still high, what does it do? It becomes hyperactive. It produces and releases more insulin so that it can overwhelm these naughty stubborn cells and force them to open up and remove the sugar from your blood. And so your blood sugar comes back down to normal. This works for a while, but then the cells are so uncomfortable that they start misbehaving. They become stubborn again and your pancreas produces even more insulin. And this cycle continues until your pancreas just can't produce enough insulin to force the cells to remove the sugar from your blood. 
and that is when your blood sugar finally starts to go up. So now you're left with high blood sugar, high insulin resistance, and high insulin levels. Each one of these three conditions causes different types of problems in the body. So with high blood sugar, lots of insulin resistance and high insulin levels, you have prediabetes basically. And as your blood sugar goes higher and higher, you progress to full-blown type 2 diabetes. Blood sugar, that's your blood glucose, is measured in milligrams or millimoles per litre, depending on where you live. Just the same way that some countries use kilograms and others use pounds to measure weight. And I have another document you can download in the description that gives you all the different numbers for blood sugar, insulin and all that. Um, so that you'll know what's normal and what's not, and you can get that in the description. Before we go to the step-by-step -step process to lower your blood sugar, there are two things that people might tell you to discourage you from even trying to reverse your diabetes. The first myth is that people will often describe type 2 diabetes as uh, a long-standing disease that will get worse over time, that has no cure, for which you will have to take medicine for the rest of your life. And if you think that sounds really depressing, I totally agree with you. But the good news is that that's not true, especially if you do the things we're going to talk about later. Some people I've met have insisted that type 2 diabetes is all about inheritance, that's your genes, that you're born with it and that there's nothing you can do about it. So let's take a set of identical twins, which is about as close as two human beings can get um, if you're looking at genetics and inheritance. So if you take a set of twins and you separate them, put twin number one in a healthy environment, put twin number two in an unhealthy environment, okay? The twin in the unhealthy environment develops diabetes and the twin living in the healthy environment doesn't develop diabetes. We've seen this in studies. This shows that type two diabetes is much more about your lifestyle than what you inherit from your parents. So your blood sugar's high, what can you do about it? I'm going to give you the strategies that will get you the biggest results in the shortest possible time. This isn't about uh, magic berries or super smoothies. Definitely, there are tips and tricks and hacks that you can use to lower your blood sugar, a little bit here, a little bit there, and you can explore those later. But let's start with the most basic things you can start doing as soon as you finish watching this video. We can't talk about lowering your blood sugar and reversing prediabetes and type 2 diabetes without talking about food. Remember we said that the regular sugar that you put in your tea or coffee contains glucose, which eventually goes into your blood and raises your blood sugar, that's your blood glucose. Well, apart from the sugar in your coffee, what else do you eat that contains glucose? Believe it or not, potatoes, rice, yam, pasta, oatmeal, bread, all these foods contain glucose. How come? Well, all these foods contain starch. And what is starch? Imagine pearls or beads all strung together one after another. Well, that's the way it is with the starch in your potatoes, for example. One glucose unit joined to another, joined to another to form long chains. Now, if you take your string of pearls and pull it apart, what happens? The pearls scatter. In the same way, the big starch molecule is pulled apart in your stomach to give these individual units of glucose that are now small enough to get into your blood and raise your blood sugar. The more starch you eat, the more sugar will be absorbed into your blood. So what do you do? 
you stop eating the starchy food. What will you eat instead? Well, the food that you eat is divided into three main groups. You have the carbohydrates, you have proteins, and you have fats. Generally speaking, carbohydrates, or carbs as they're sometimes called, are going to raise your blood sugar the most, followed by proteins and fats, which will have the least effects on your blood sugar. So eat non-starchy carbohydrates like leafy greens and vegetables, and vegetables that grow above the ground. Eat lots of protein like meat, fish, chicken, eggs, and other animal foods. Eat natural fats and oils like olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, palm oil, lard. Please don't stress yourself. Eating these fats is not going to give you a heart attack. So there's nothing to worry about there. But you should avoid all processed oils like soybean oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, and all that. So right now you might be asking, don't I need sugar to stay alive? The answer is yes, your body can't do without glucose, but guess what? Your body can make glucose whenever it needs to. It will take all that fat that's stored in your pancreas and in your liver, that's stopping them from working properly, and all the fat that's stored all over your body and the fat in your food, and use that for energy. It will also turn some into glucose. So that was step one. Eat non-starchy carbs, lots of protein and healthy fats. When you eat that way, then you will be ready for the next step in the process. So remember how we said earlier that your pancreas becomes overworked trying to make enough insulin to bring down your blood sugar. So we need to give your poor, exhausted pancreas a rest. And how do we do that? By making sure that uh, for at least half of the day, that's about 12 hours, you're not eating or drinking anything except water. Don't panic. I know that sounds hard, but it's really not. If you have your last meal at, say, 7 o'clock in the evening, then you don't eat or drink anything until 7 o'clock the next morning. If your um, last meal is at 8, then you don't drink or eat anything until 8 a.m. the next day. That's 12 hours, and you'll be asleep most of that time anyway. So um, the problem is that so many of us have gotten into the habit of having snacks after dinner, snacks before bed, snacks throughout the day, which means that your pancreas is struggling to make lots of insulin round the clock, and this is exhausting. So that was step number two. Don't eat for at least 12 hours each day. Now you've done two things. You're eating food that doesn't raise your blood sugar as much, so you need less insulin. And you're eating less frequently, which means you need less insulin. This puts less stress on your pancreas, which helps it eventually to start working better. So to be very practical, this next step might be a problem for some people because I personally wouldn't dream of being outside at night. It's just not safe or convenient, uh, but there are ways around this. So what you need to do is, after eating, you need to walk for 10 to 20 minutes, especially after your evening meal because you're much less likely to move after dinner. Well, most of us are anyway. If you can't walk outside, Walk indoors. If you don't have space to travel to move around, walk on the spot. You can listen to music or an audio book or even watch TV. All you need to do is to move the big muscles of your body, basically your legs, for 10 to 20 minutes. This will lower your blood sugar after eating and also keep your insulin levels nice and low. So that was step number three move after your meals. This leads us nicely to the one thing we should definitely be doing at night. Just one night, one night of bad sleep is enough to raise your blood sugar the next day. So imagine the effects on your blood sugar 
when you regularly don't get enough good quality sleep at night. Your sleep should be a priority, not something that you get to when you've finished everything else. You need to plan for it. So don't drink coffee after 12 noon or just avoid it altogether if you're sensitive to caffeine because uh, this can keep you awake at night. Dim all your lights at home in the evening. This tells your brain that it's nighttime and that you should be getting ready to sleep. Don't, please, don't drink lots of water in the evening so you don't spend half the night getting up to pee. And avoid using your phones and computers and during looking at bright screens two hours before your bedtime. To get your blood sugar even lower, watch this next video for some extra tips.